take me or take him. I remember praying like, I need you to get rid of him. Like, if you gotta kill him, I want him out of my home. When I was younger, and even up into my later adulthood, I had a really troubled relationship with my father. Because I saw way too much. I saw what no child should see. Like, there were days where I literally would cover my head with a pillow to try to drown out the noise. I remember one time my father came home and got really upset at my mom because she brought us too many Christmas gifts and attacked her in front of his a, another male friend of his. Um, so those images, like, uh, very fresh in my memory. Uh, very fresh, I think, also in my sister's memories. I've even struggled about what I would say if he were to die. Like, I don't know what I would say at his funeral because what do you say to a person who you feel owes you an apology for hurting people in your life? The thing that changed my mind, or at least helped me to see his humanity, I interviewed my mom because I would talk a lot about domestic violence and the experience that I had, like through vicarious trauma, by witnessing it, hearing him say things like, I'm going to kill her, um, and then watching him try. I was interested in allowing her the space to tell her story because I've been doing it for her. And she shocked me because I thought she was going to be mad like me. The first thing she said was that when she, were, when she was younger, my dad was her hero. There was a point in which she could have nearly been raped and it was my father who actually stopped the guy from hurting her. The guy actually beat my father up. She also mentioned that when she would not have food to eat and when even she had trouble receiving support from her own family, my father was there for her. She didn't start though with how he hurt her. She started with the good things. And that really, <laughs> that tripped me up a bit because I'm like, she was the person that was directly impacted by this man's fists. You know what I'm saying? But she found it in her heart to forgive him, which is why I think her life is so blessed. And if she could forgive him, it made me realize that I had some work to do. So, I mean, part of the lesson that I've come to learn is that here is a man who absolutely did some horrible shit. <laughs> and, um, but he absolutely did some good things too. And I've been feeling like he has a responsibility as an adult to instigate a conversation. And I, I think I've been waiting on that for years. I've been waiting for him to say sorry. But I think he may not be able to do that. And as a, as a way to heal myself, it might be uh, an invitation for me to bring the conversation up with him. I've had the benefit of being able to write about a lot of this stuff. Um, and in many ways, it helped, it's helped me to put tears on paper. I haven't always allowed myself to, to fully feel and to live into the hurt. I, I show up thinking I need to be on and okay for the purpose of everyone else. There are so, I mean, really, like, if I took an inventory of, of a lot of the things I've endured, <laughs> um, there would be license to cry and license to, to really fully experience the type of brokenness that those type of traumas can perpetuate. My, my 20s were dark. You know, I, I was finishing school programs and doing a lot of stuff. They were some of the darkest years of my life. And those were years where I cried a lot. I literally would sleep days away. You know, I had a fear that I would be like him. I, ha I was in a relationship with a few partners behind. And we got into an argument. There was a moment in our argument where I felt myself becoming like very angry and I like swung in his direction and he was shocked I was shocked and we both stopped for about 10 minutes he was angry too and but I cried um, and I called my best friend at the time because I was so angry and also scared that I had the potential to be the very thing that I had come to hate. That's the only time that ever happened in my life. But then on the flip side, I've been, I was angry for a long time at my mom. I remember one time I got in trouble for getting help when she was being abused. And for a long time I kept thinking, why did she keep this man in her house? Why did she keep him? Until I found myself in a situation in a quasi relationship where I had been also physically attacked by someone that I was involved with, another guy. 
once had a knife put to my throat and the other time he punched me in my face and I didn't do anything. It made me really connect to the world both of, of a perpetrator that at any moment any of us can be like in any of these positions as victim and perpetrator even if I'm not using my hands right and like in a way that humanizes my father because what it also does it humanizes me. sit down and have written letters to like your loved ones, your family members, your sisters, your brothers, about some hard shit, some loving shit, and we want to encourage that process because we feel like healing can be found there. Kiese Lehman is brother, a fantastic contemporary writer. In one of the sections of his book there are some letters between the four of us, so today we'll read those letters publicly to one another. Indeed, my living is your living. Is your father's living? Is my father's living? Is my mother's living? Is a stranger's living? And it is the revolution. If God needs to condemn anything to hell, it ought to be the idea of social death. Every day we commit an act of revolution, an act of treason against a system that was never meant to guarantee our survival. More love. I really rarely had community with black straight men. You know, the other three are black straight identified brothers in ways that we can talk explicitly about sexuality and issues that impact us. It's been, it's gonna be amazing. I love these brothers. I love them. We call ourselves the gang. <laughs> what, what we do together, we write for the purposes of being honest. Words can heal. And I know that a lot of what we read is, is really hard and heavy, but we also discover a lot of love in our writing too. And I don't want to leave here as if like our lives have been so bleak that somehow love has not shown up. All love is political, but I also have been healed through love too. I think um, one of my ex-partners is named Shane, who really helped me to love myself. He was the person that was really responsible for me being able to like look in the mirror and see all of me in ways that I had before. And to love my black gay self, he helped me to, he gave me the, the courage to, to share sort of the news of my sexual identity with my mother. He pushed me to consider like what it meant to be in a religious institution that didn't affirm me. And he just embraced me um, for all of my good and imperfections beyond all of the things that one can do publicly, I believe, like the best way to exercise the politic is what you're doing behind the scenes. Yeah, I mean, it's just, I'm just in a loving space, dating, and, and even the hope of what it might mean to raise a family with someone are things that, that continued also to be things that guide me and inspire me to do, to get up every day and do the work that I do. And not just to work, but to live the type of life that is conducive for love and conducive to community smiles because all that stuff is just as radical as a, as a protest and a march and some written assignment that i need to do for